Hello community. You know quantization for our LLMs. You know the low rank approximation. You know the quantized LoRa. And today I introduce you to the big brother, to the best performer, a loft quantization. So here we go. We have a new advanced technique called LoRa fine tuning error quantization. And it combines what we know, the quantization and the low rank approximation of our tensor structures in a very specific way. We use this for compressing and fine tuning our pre trained LLMs. And the beautiful thing is, Loft Q outperforms here our Q LoRa, especially in the low bit regime. So here we go. This is the actual publication. October 23rd, 2023. And we have here our researcher from Georgia Tech and Microsoft Azure. Now, if you want to see the code, you jump directly here to the GitHub, but let's have a look what is the main idea behind this. Now, the authors approach this as an optimization problem and they formulated it as a Frobenius norm minimization aiming to minimize the discrepancy between the original weight tensor of our pre-trained LLM or VLM and now the combined quantized and low rank approximation weight. So we have here now our Q, our quantized weights and here our low rank approximation. So this optimization problem takes into account both the quantization error and the low rank approximation. So we start here with a pre-trained LLM, a huge one from I don't know what company, and it's full-fledged weight tensor, W. And W is huge. Now, with the LoRa aware quantization, have we now an objective function that takes into account both the quantized weight tensor, Q, and the low rank matrices. But Let's start here at first with the quantization. So our goal is to find a quantized tensor Q that is a good approximation of the full-fledged tensor W of our weights of the pre-trained model, but also serves as a robust starting point for the LoRa fine-tuning. So the quantization the auto choose is a four-bit normal float quantization. Remember, careful, it's based on the assumption that the weight distribution follows here a normal distribution. So, you remember, Ben, quantization, we approximate here a high precision floating point number in our tensor structure with a lower precision low bit integer. So, we use less memory and the whole computation is faster. And, you know, the second term here is, of course, here, our lower term. T for transpose matrix. Great. Now the goal, as you see here, is to minimize the discrepancy between our original weight tensor, or huge weight tensor W, and the combined quantized and low rank approximated weight tensor. This is now our optimization problem. So the goal is to find a Q that is a good approximation of W, but also serves as a robust initial condition here for our fine-tuning exercise, LoRa. Great. Now, if you say, hey, what is a Frobenius norm? Uh, why is this immunization project? Here on the right side, I have for you, Ben, a very short summary. I chat here with GPT-4 and I say, hey, can you explain this in the context here of this loft queue? And this here is a very nice introduction to this topic. However, please note that we have here two techniques that help each other out. But remember, each technique is specialized for one goal. The quantization of our tensor reduces the numerical precision of the weights, thereby also, and this is the positive side, reducing the model's memory footprint. But, you know, and this is now the bad side of it, it can introduce quantization errors that may affect now the performance of this low-bit quantized model. 
On the other hand, the lowering approximation of a lower of our tensor structure aims to approximate the weight matrix with lower dimensional matrices A and B, thereby now saving computational costs during the inference. Of course, since this is also an approximation from a mathematical standpoint, it may also lose important features in the data. And now the intelligent guess was, hey, if we combine both into one framework, what is the best framework that we can have both elements optimizing each other at the same time? So we want to have a balance of the trade-offs between the quantization error and the approximation error. Really nice idea. Now, if you want to find out about the loss function in this particular case, this is what GPT-4 tells you here in a very easy example. It gives you here also here exactly tells you what this is. W, the high precision pre-trained weight matrix, our quantized matrix and our low rank approximation, our matrices A and B. And the loss function encapsulate, you know this from our neural network, network uh, balance between the storage efficiency through the quantization and our computational efficiency through our LoRa. Minimizing it aims to find the most efficient presentation of W that retains as much of the original information W as possible. And you might say, hey, wait a second, when I studied mathematics, I know this, this is a theorem. Yes, of course, you are great. This is the eckert yang marsky theorem that states that the best rank K approximation W hat minimizes the Frobenius norm of the difference that the error is given by our sigma at a K plus one singular value. For Ben, if you're new to this, look, here I have written here a short code for you. I have some random matrix. I compute here the singular value decomposition of this complex matrix. Then I truncate here to keep the largest, for example, 10 singular values of this. I compute the low rank approximation of this high dimensional matrix. I compute here the Frobenius norm of the error. And this is where you can play around and have an idea how this system works on a very simple Python program. So we approximate a matrix with a lower rank matrix of rank 10, but please go with whatever you like. So, but we know now that this theorem states that the best low rank approximation of a matrix in the Frobenius norm is given by the truncated singular value decomposition, SVD. In other words, to be simple, the eckert young marsky theorem states that the best way to approximate a matrix with a lower rank matrix is just simple, to keep the larger singular values and discharge the smaller one. Easy, simple peasy. If you think, hey, what about, what are singular values of a matrix? They're non-negative square roots of the eigenvalues of the Hermitian product. And if you have a real matrix, like we have, the singular values are simply the non-negative square roots of the eigenvalues of the matrix itself. It helps to know a tiny little bit of mathematics. So now to this beautiful idea here of the orchards, and they say, we thought about alternating optimization. And this alternating is the key. So we, in this methodology of loft Q, the quantization here, alternating optimization is employed to iteratively update here our Q, our quantization weight tensor, our A and our B matrix. Specifically, given the current estimates of A and B, you find a quantized Q that minimizes the norm. I just showed you one second ago. And then, given this new Q, the new quantized Q, a singular value decomposition is used to find a low rank approximation, our famous A and B, that minimizes now the residual W minus Q. And this optimization is performed in alternating steps. Careful, this is the most important idea here between the quantization and the singular value decomposition. And this is to ensure that the quantization and the low rank approximations are balanced and, this is the beauty, mutually reinforcing. 
as opposed to just one dominating the other or causing significant degradation in the representation power. So this idea is just, hey, we know quantization and we know LoRa and we combine it now in an alternating optimization. Great. Always helps to have a university in the background. And then finally, we apply now the LoRa fine tuning so our optimize that we have now, our Q, our A, and our B are now used for the fine tuning. And remember, we started here with a pre-trained model. And during this phase, what a coincidence, our Q tensor is kept frozen and only our A and B are subject to change via, let's say, an optimization algorithm like AdamW. So you see, the idea is simple. But this alternating is now interesting. Does it give us a better performance than Q LoRa? This was now really, really fascinating. And doing now the empirical data, if you read the study, please, you have to read the study yourself. You have a hyperparameter T to balance here this, but Experiments conducted across multiple tasks and multiple models revealed that even a minimal number of alternating steps result in significant improvements. And if those two functions really help each other out in the error compensation, it's just a simple but brilliant idea. And of course, you have the performance matrix here, you have the specific data set, and you compare this, and you do the benchmark, and you say, hey, this is great, because as the authors show, the loft Q is shown to outperform quantized LoRa. Furthermore, it compares favorably with other quantization schemes, like our quantization aware training and the post-training quantization. And it provides a balanced trade-off between the computational efficiency and the performance of those models. So the beauty now of this methodology lies in how these two techniques complement each other. And remember, while the quantization reduces the weight representation complexity, the lowering approximation improves the representation itself. And those two working in tandem, great. And as I told you, alternating between them ensures a highly optimized. And if you're interested, I have some thoughts about this and have done them. So my thoughts at the end is maybe I do an upcoming video, a Halloween edition or a late Halloween edition, where I think, hey, does Loft Q highly quantized model, really tiny model with a high performance, we can bring this to edge devices. So Maybe I have some thoughts about the functionality and the integration here of iPhone 17. And we read quite a lot of rumors here about OpenAI's new phone. And you know, there's a never ending stream of information of Microsoft's upcoming AI phone. And let's have maybe some basic ideas how a loft queue, how a, this specific way of quantization with the highest performance would be helpful if we think about time period of one year or maybe two years in the future, what the functionalities of our phone could be and how AI will improve here our phones. And if you think about here an iPhone, you know we have a lot of computational photography happening here with AI algorithm even today on the iPhone 15. But I think this is just the start. So why not let's have here a short glance in a possible future. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was a little bit informative. And as always, it would be great to see you in my next video.